data. Today I'll be discussing the filtering options currently available in TASEL. And this will be a two video feature, so the, ver the very first one is going to be just about uh, the question of, that you should be asking yourselves first, which is what type of filtering should I be doing? And that's going to be based on your data type and the biological model. And the next video is going to deal with the filtering options themselves. So this first video is also going to show you some of the things you can do in TASEL to know which uh, criteria you're going to end up using. So let's get started. Um, this question of what uh, filtering you should do may seem obvious, but it really isn't. And uh, there's a couple of things here implemented in TASEL that you can do. So uh, let's start with genotype. So here we have the sample data set in which we have inbred lines, but you can have your own population in which you have biparentals or outcrossing individuals. And this is important because it will affect the expected allele frequency and also the heterozygosity. So we can look into those values here and based on that we can uh, use those filtering criteria. And for phenotypes, you also want to filter based on whatever the expected ranges are and maybe some missing data. Uh, and yeah, so for example, in the case of the range, you may see a 10 meter tall maize plant. And maybe it's unreasonable to think that you had one of those in your field. Um, and this outlier may, down the road, have a huge impact in downstream analysis. So, uh, Let's, let's just begin by plotting the data. I think that's a very healthy way to look at it and this is very useful to decide which uh, filtering criteria you're going to use, be using. So I'm going to start with this genotypic data and here we're going to go to analysis. Yes. And under genome summary, we're going to click here and then there's going to be three options displayed. I'm going to leave them all. Uh, it drums really fast but I'm going to go through each of them right now with you and then you can decide which ones are more meaningful for you. So this is done. and we're, I'm going to start with the overall summary. So first of all you're going to have the number of individuals and the number of sites and then the number of sites times the number of individuals. And uh, an interesting thing is that you have that already here. So when you go back to your genotype you see that you have 281 sequences or taxa and you have these 3093 sites and it also tells you the number of chromosomes so all this information is already there so the overall summary may not be as meaningful as, as uh, you may expect uh, but uh, there's a couple of other things like the number of gametes and all of that is in the documentation online the allele summary is also very rough view of the data you have the frequency of the different alleles and one of the things you can look at is uh, if the proportion of CGTA is sort of reasonably um, equivalent. Uh, depending on some sequencing technology, this may deviate from a similar proportion of CG and TA or what you, uh, region of the genome you're targeting. But in general, you expect roughly the same uh, amount of each nucleotide. And high deviations from this may be a little. Uh, indicative of some uh, issue. You also have the number of ends, the number of missing data, and the heterocycles. In this case is very low, which makes sense because we have inbred lines. And uh, we're going to look now at the site summary. And uh, this, as you can see, has a lot of values, a lot of things that you can be looking at. So instead of looking at this table directly, what we can do is actually do a chart. So we're going to go to results and chart and here we can create histograms and this is what's going to be really useful for us for knowing which filtering parameters we're going to use so you can also do a scatter plots, bar charts and let's start with just a histogram and let's say uh, one of the important things which is uh, minor allele frequency so we look at the minor allele frequency distribution and we can use more bins for, for us to visualize it better and you can see this is the distribution of the data uh, based on what kind of population you have. If you have outcrossing, it may look a little different. If you have biparental, it should look very different. And again, this is a useful way to look at the data. Maybe uh, you expect your frequency to be 0 0.5 or those are the alleles you're interested in. So then looking at this can help you see the values. Here we have 0 0.5, here you have 0. And then this can help you decide which filtering criteria you're going to end up using. And the other thing you can look at is the proportion heterozygous. As you can see, uh, 
it's very very low het uh, heterozygosity, which makes sense. Maybe if you have sites that have very high heterozygosity, something may be up with those sites, and uh, maybe just want to filter those. Um, and you can also plot the proportion missing. And this is a distribution. Again, this is a useful thing to look at. Uh, if you decide you want to uh, see which sites have very high missingness, uh, you can just go back here and in proportion, well, this is proportion heterozygous, um, in proportion missing, you can just sort them. And this is the site that has the most missing data. It's still very reasonably low. And then you can say, okay, so this site name is uh, PCA. Uh, 03551.2 so you can write that down it's on chromosome 1 and then you can use that name down the road to filter that data and uh, you can also do that with uh, taxa summary uh, here I'm going to show you sort of like um, some of the options we have and again on the result and chart um, we can also create a histogram and uh, again we can see the proportion missing by taxa. So we have 500 individuals and some taxa have 0.25 proportion missing and that may be uh, relevant for you. So keep an eye out. Uh, uh, finally regarding phenotypes you can also do some things and uh, again uh, results, chart and it seems like that. There. Results, chart and we can do an XY scatter, so maybe you have phenotypes that are correlated and you want to see that correlation. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to plot uh, ear height by ear diameter, and we see there's uh, some correlation. It's maybe not meaningful, but it's just important for you to know that these options are available and you can use that to filter data. Maybe you know your, data set, your two data points are going to be highly correlated and you'll have an outlier, so you take note of that and you see sort of where it lives and down the road, uh, do the filtering. And finally, uh, I want to finish with uh, your expectation of uh, data values and uh, anywhere from missingness to like the range and in particular with missingness uh, and values out of range. Please uh, be critical, keep an open mind, mistakes happen, so really look carefully at the various controls in your uh, experiments, look at plots, look at distributions and that will uh, give you an idea if you have outliers or if the data is not very normally distributed and that's going to be important uh, here we can do a histogram of uh, ear height um, you can see that it's fairly um, well like normally distributed and that's going to have an impact in the downstream analysis so this is the first tool you can use in TASO to look at the data and define what uh, filtering criteria you're going to use and this ne the next video is actually going to be using the filter options here in TASO. And we're going to select a couple of things and show you how it works. Uh, and thank you very much for watching and uh, keep an eye out for the next video.